What's up, y'all? Time for some more Derby Tech for y'all. I'll show you how to wire up a Derby mower. I'll show you a couple of ideas or a couple of ways you can do it, depending on how you want to really, how much you want to do. And we're going to do it on this one. Since I got the hood off, I'm working on it. Yeah. How do I have mine wired? Well, on this one here, I have the wiring as about as simple as you can get. We'll start with the kill circuit. It's your kill wire coming out of your coil, right here. Sometimes they'll go right to this little doodad, like this one, or actually go to this little bolt. This little isolated bolt right here. And that's where you'd hook your toggle switch to. Uh, you'd run another wire from here to your toggle switch. And on the other side of your toggle switch, you'll run it straight to just the ground. To the, like the block, or like to the bolt down here, like a mounting bolt. Wherever it will ground the coil out to kill it when you flip the switch. It will be opposite. On will be off, off will be on. When you do it this way. You can do it that way. Or this one here still is like old school. The way it was when this motor came off the snapper. This is a snapper engine. So there's another wire coming off this pole, and instead of going to the toggle switch, it's going up to this little doodad. So whenever my throttle is all the way down, that kills my motor. Up any higher, like from here, up, it runs. But as soon as you push it all the way down, it shuts my motor off. Let's see if I can show you how this thing operates. Yeah, you can't really see it. You can barely see. Watch this bottom corner. See that poked up? That's because this governor here, when it's moving, it's actually hitting this backside here and grounding this out directly through the governor. I'm keeping this as about simple as it gets and it works. So that's your kill circuit. Very simple. Now your starting circuit. This is where things will get a little bit complicated for some people, I guess. Uh, it's really not too bad. Uh, we'll start off with the starter. You got your main power from your starter right here. This will go back into a starter solenoid, or you can do a bypass. This is the wire right here coming up from the starter, coming up to a solenoid. I run a starter solenoid. So here's where the starter's hooked up. Here's the positive. That goes down to the battery. The ground grounds right to the body of the mower. And that's what completes that. Um, then on some solenoids, you'll have two pins, like this one does. One pin is a ground, which you'll ground right to the chassis, and that grounds out the solenoid. The other pin, which is what this wire is, that will go to your push button right here. One side will go to your push button, the other side of your push button will go straight to your hot side, right, yeah, your hot side. The, uh, yeah, the hot side of the battery. Which I don't remember how mine, yeah, mine is. It's been a while since I looked, so. Your push button, one side's hot, all time, straight from the battery. The other side goes to the pin on your solenoid. Uh, let's see if I got another solenoid. I don't think I have one handy, but, yeah. Some of these solenoids will have these two pins, some will only have one pin. If it has the one pin, you just need the wire going to your push button. Uh, also, if you're running a solenoid high mount like this, to where it's easy to access, I run a short little jumper wire off the starter side. So just in case my push button was to fail, or the starter solenoid was to fail, I can take this and just bypass it. And that's a direct lead straight from the starter straight to the battery. That's how I run mine. You can just run the wire coming from the starter and just touch it to the battery. I know a lot of guys that do that. Just start straight to the battery. It eliminates all this other stuff. I mean it works. But I just like it a little neater. Less likely to tear my battery up. Because batteries don't get any cheaper. Especially because I'm running the bigger 300 cold crank amp batteries. Um, go to the charging circuit. This motor 
Yeah, this motor does not have a charging circuit at all. There's no charging circuit. I don't remember if it was damaged or what, but there's no wires coming out for the charging. There'll be two wires that come out on this side. We'll go here to one of these other motors and show you. Uh, yeah. Uh, this one here has one wire. If it's one wire and it's a red wire, it'll go straight to your battery. That's your charging circuit. Charge your battery. Let's see if I can find one here that has. Yeah, here's one. Here's a newer, newer motor. Most of your motors that, that you'll come across will have two wires. Yeah, you can't really see it too well. Let's drag this motor out. All right. Yeah, you'll have two wires coming out with this plug. You'll have a red one and a black one. Sometimes it's white. Uh, See, the red one goes straight to the battery. There will be like this little uh, nub on the end like that, this hump. That is a diode. So that way it keeps the current going one way. That goes straight to your battery, the positive on your battery. This other wire, you do not need it. It's for a headlight circuit. Like if you want to run headlights or you want to run a dummy dummy light, to let, you know, your motor's still running, you can tap right into that. That is an AC current. So it'll only work lights. You really don't need it. I don't even run a charging system because I don't really need it. As long as you keep your battery good and charged the night before, you won't have no problems really. You shouldn't have a problem with battery going dead. Not on a lawnmower. So I don't even bother running a charging circuit. As you can see, this battery here has not been on charge in a while. I'd probably say at least a minimum of six months it's been sitting. Uh, this is the first time I've really been touched, you know, touched this mower since, uh, what is it, the Illinois Bridgeport, Illinois Derby. So as you can see, it is a little on the low side, but it still cranks this little motor up no problem. So yeah, there's your basic wiring for a derby mower. You can keep the, the uh, factory wiring, you know, all this cobbled up spaghetti stuff and hope that the factory key switch still works and stays reliable. Or you can run a push button and a toggle switch. Or you can do it the way I do and just keep this old school sub if your motor is equipped with that. Some of them will not have that old setup. So you'll have to run just a simple toggle switch to shut it off. Not a big deal. Uh, let's see, I will go ahead and cover one more thing. If you're running the new, new motor, the new gen motors, there'll be another little wire coming off the bottom of the carburetor. It's a little solenoid that's on here. That wire will need to go uh, to the battery to activate that solenoid so you get fuel. I would highly recommend taking that solenoid out, cutting the end of it off, and putting it back in there, or just replacing it with a short bolt and getting rid of that. Uh, I don't think I have any. Yeah, I do. I got one right here. Yeah, here's one. So one side will be ground, one side will be power. And it's a stupid little solenoid. The thing is not even. Yeah, that's tight. I can't get it out. But at the end of that, there'll be a little plunger that sticks out, a little needle, and it goes in and out to shut the fuel off. Just cut it flush with the end of this. Bypass it. Get rid of it. That way you don't have to worry about that thing because they're notorious for failure. When you do that though, make sure you put an inline fuel shut off. Just in case the needle valve and the float floods the motor out. Always keep that. It's always good to have. But yeah, that's basically it. It's really simple on the wiring on these things. On doing them. Well, yeah, when you're modifying them. Yeah. So here's another eight horse that's got that old school shut off. An old snapper motor, another snapper motor, and I do use it. It is hooked up to where it shuts it off when I turn the governor all the way down. Same identical motor as that one, both off snappers. All those motors there, off snappers. I really like those snapper motors. But yeah, there you go. I hope that uh, that's helpful. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if this helped you out.
I know a couple of people have been asking me about wiring. This is the easiest way to explain it to you. Uh, then sitting there trying to type it out and all that. So this should cover everything. This will get you wired up, ready to go, and be a reliable setup. So yeah, there you have it. Give me a thumbs up if it was useful. Got any questions? Throw it down in the comments. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe for more tips. To the next one. Later, y'all.